Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi Good afternoon. Thank you very much. I'm so happy to be joining you all again. Thank you, Dr. Ita, for the invitation. And it's good to see your smiling, friendly, uh, happy face again. All, all the way from Taiwan, yeah? All the way from Taipei, yeah? Okay, okay. All right. All right. <laughs> Only say shit this time. <laughs> oh, okay. okay. <laughs> <laughs> it ended, it ended. <laughs> Just a little bit. <laughs> it ended, okay. <laughs> uh, 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 I, I'm happy this is uh, the second time I'm with uh, your program, the summer program. And uh, uh, it, it seems that there is a continuity from the previous uh, lecture. Uh, uh, I presented uh, last year, it was on uh, religions in Southeast Asia. So now we are zooming in um, and, uh, into uh, a specific uh, religion, specific area, Islam in the Malay world. So uh, again, uh, before I, I, I start, to get, together with me is a, is a, 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 a Nusantara audience uh, crowd or, or, or friends together with me. But, uh, you can see this is actually our Sempri's uh, meeting room. And uh, uh, on, on my left uh, is Dr. Ali Maksrum from UMA, Universitas Muhammadiyah, Yogyakarta, uh, our Secretary of MIHI, Masters in uh, International Relations. Uh, and uh, kebetulan, kalau nggak salah, it, apa namanya ini, uh, apa, mahasiswi itu, itu, you studied there in UMA dulu ya, kalau nggak salahnya. Betul ya? Yes. Yes. Uh, Hello, yeah. Pak. Hello, Pak Ali Maksum. <laughs> uh, 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 Dr. Ali di sini, he is uh, uh, as a visiting scholar doing his sabbatical leave over here. So anyone wants to come in, you're welcome to come here as well. And together with us is uh, our students, uh, internship students uh, from international relations from UNIZA, Universitas, or University, <laughs> University uh, Sultan uh, Zaina Abidin. Right? Uh, in Trengganu, right? Uh, where if you know Dr. Uh, Suyatno, who has also uh, been to Jogja and 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 uh, and is the Wakil Dekan, is the deputy dean over there, um, and and together with me also another in front of me, might, you might not be able to see. Okay, that's uh, uh, Raje uh, Araki uh, from UMM, Universitas Muhammadiyah Malang. Uh, uh, he's doing his masters. Uh, I'm a supervisor. Uh, in the area of migrant workers, uh, studying migrant workers in, in, in Penang. And next to him is uh, Saudari Nisa, who is uh, uh, also doing her internship. Uh, her, his, her area is in uh, English for profi professional writing. Am I right? All right, okay. So they are all intern, intern students. Uh, and uh, <coughs> anyone who is interested to come, including you, Dr. Ita, if you'd like to come as a visiting scholar or just to have fun, go ahead, you know, that doesn't have to be... I would a... love to, I would yeah, love no, to. No. The doors are open right now. Only thing is that St. Pris is under renovation. We are replacing the roof with solar panels because uh, uh, we want to be uh, sustainable, supposedly. Yeah, let me, let me start, go ahead, because uh, what I have uh, prepared is something that I can... Uh, uh, something that is ready for two-hour lecture, but I will do my best to, to make it more concise and, and compact. Yeah? So the, the title is Islam in the Malay world. There it is. So I'll, I'll present to you a, a Nusantara perspective. Yeah? Uh, since I'm also heading the Nusantara Malay Archipelago Research uh, uh, in, in our center, uh, our SEMPRIS uh, stands for Center for Policy Research and International Studies. It's also the oldest uh, research center in social science in Malaysia. So uh, and and we have uh, Nusantara as our one of our areas of focus uh, in, in the in the center. So uh, ready if we go to the next slide. Uh, and I like to begin with this slide. So uh, 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 many times when I talk about religion, especially religion in Southeast Asia, I like to present this slide as my beginning, my opening slide. Right. This is uh, Masjid Istiqlal, Indonesia. It is the largest masjid the largest mosque, largest masjid, I prefer to use masjid and mosque uh, but because mosque come from the word uh, mosquito coined by, 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 by the Spanish uh, so, so I, I use the word masjid. The largest masjid in Southeast Asia it is also, uh, you know, uh, Istiqdal means uh, uh, Merdeka, uh, 
independence eh? so, and we are in a month of independence right uh, tomorrow right tomorrow is the independence day T- tomorrow right tanggal 17 belas right ah yeah yeah tanggal yes. 17 belas yeah t- uh, tomorrow is a uh, Indonesian independence day thirty uh, first August is Malaysian independence day so uh, this month is independence month for Malaysia we so we celebrate independence month from uh, from August until September sixteen sixteen which is Malaysia day which is which is another thing. Now the beauty of uh, this masjid yes, is that this masjid uh, was built to commemorate uh, the you know the independence of uh, Indonesia. Um, but the, the 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 philosophy or the local wisdom, the Nusantara local wisdom behind this is 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 uh, is brilliant. Right? Uh, it was debated to place it in another place that's less congested and all that. But uh, the the president then, uh, President Sukarno, then argued that. Uh, you know, according to the Javanese uh, local wisdom, uh, the, the 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 Masjid Agung should be close to the Kraton. Eh? The Masjid Agung, the the Masjid, the main Masjid, uh, yeah, uh, should be clear uh, close to the to the the, the king's place, to the to the palace. Right? So it was placed uh, in that's that's not too far away from uh, the Merdeka Square at, at the back. Is it called Merdeka Square? Alun 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 Merdeka Square is Malaysia. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> because okay, Malaysia. Uh, alun alun tu. Then you, uh, you you can see di belakang sana itu Monas ya. Uh, and and uh, the the other part behind this uh, this uh, the story of the building of this mosque, building of this masjid, that this is built by the, a chief architect uh, who is a Protestant Christian uh, by the name of Frederick Silaban. So uh, uh, it shows uh, how integrated uh, uh, religion uh, is in uh, the Nusantara Malay Archipelago that uh, a, a Christian uh, Protestant architect uh, is requested yeah, uh, by the by the country by the president uh, and who's willing to design uh, a, a masjid that is suited, and it is the biggest, the largest masjid in, in, in Southeast Asia, by the way, largest, largest masjid in, in, in Nusantara, in the Malay world, right? So, uh, and it is placed, right? And the significance of this masjid is placed. If you go there, I've visited uh, a couple of times. Uh, I wish I could be more often visiting that place. Uh, right across, uh, uh, right across the, the cathedral, the, uh, the, the Emmanuel Church, the Jakarta Cathedral, you know, you can actually cross the street and you'll find that uh, the, the the members of the church during uh, uh, Jumaat prayers they will also guard the take care of the the traffic you know you see that kind of proximity that kind of warmth that kind of uh, 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 of a uh, uh, collaboration friendship uh, comradeship or whatever you call it uh, in nusantara and that is i think uh, a, a good symbol of, of religion a good symbol of uh, how uh, uh, Islam welcomes other uh, religion, and other religion also welcomes um, uh, Islam, Muslim. Yeah? And so uh, uh, the the idea of religion is not supposed to be um, an institution of conflict, but rather an institution of solidarity, of of shared values, of shared norms, of shared destiny. Uh, so this is this is a powerful symbol of uh, Nusantara. A powerful symbol of, of, of the Malay archipelago, right, where we have uh, religions coming together. Islam, not just coexisting, but collaborating, integrating other religion and other members of other religion as part of the uh, bigger, larger family of, of Nusantara, right? So this is this is the, the powerful image uh, of of uh, the masjid. Now let me go to the next slide and define a bit, right? Um, about Nusantara Malay Archipelago, which which uh, uh, sorry 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 okay uh, Nusantara basically means between islands or between lands. Right? Our our existence uh, our existence in Southeast Asia uh, is very much like the Mediterranean uh, uh, reality in Europe, where we. Uh, uh, people of the sea, uh, we are people of the ocean. Uh, we 
uh, and we are basically an archipelago, right? We are an archipelago. In a way, we, the sea is our land, the land is our sea, the samudra is our tanah, or tanah is our samudra. Hence, we use the word tanah airku, right? Uh, we are the people who refer to our homeland as tanah air, which means land and water, right? We don't talk about motherland uh, only or, 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 or homeland only, we talk about tanah air. And, and air, water, uh, the sea, the, the, the rivers, the, 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 uh, the ocean, the, the lakes uh, are an important part of our existence that define us as Nusantara. So when we talk about Nusantara is a term that we understand, but outside of Nusantara, uh, we are known as the Malay archipelago. So when I talk about Nusantara Malay archipelago, I'm referring to this cultural space, this, uh, this, uh, this, uh, uh, this historical space, right, that begins once upon a time from uh, the Benua Sunda, from the Sunda land or the Sunda basin, right, uh, the, uh, the Sunda shelf, uh, which, uh, you know, 25,000 years ago, right, 2,500 uh, years ago, uh, we were one big continent. Uh, and then after that, there were uh, earthquakes and, 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 uh, and, and uh, 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 volcano eruptions, right, uh, including the Krakatau and then uh, Toba, and then and, and then we, we and then there were tectonic shifts occurring, and we split into islands. Yeah? And uh, at that time, uh, 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 those who uh, were fighting the floods, that come, there were big floods coming in. Some actually uh, sailed to the north, uh, to Taiwan, right. Uh, and and to the to the east to uh, Easter Islands to the west to Madagascar to the south to New Zealand and we become the early settlers. In fact, it's proven by DNA testing, right? It's being done by Oppenheimer, Professor Oppenheimer from Oxford University, that we are the original people of this place, right? The whole out of Taiwan theory was a false theory. Uh, actually, we went to Taiwan and then we came back from Taiwan, right? Otherwise, there's an out, out of Taiwan theory, which is actually false. Uh, DNA uh, uh, research and DNA proof has shown that we were at the original uh, people of, of, of Nusantara, of the Malay archipelago. And um, if you look at the story of Nusantara, right, and we are uh, from the, the Sumpah Palapa, right? Uh, Nusantara is a concept. Uh, Gajah Mada, well, you all from here, the Gajah Mada, so uh, had, had this pledge, uh, this Sumpah Palapa, that they would not, uh, under under uh, 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 under no circumstance, uh, that he would uh, sleep uh, soundly or eat, right, uh, uh, if the whole of Nusantara is not united. And Nusantara did, at that time. Is defined, you know, uh, basically a large part of uh, Southeast Asia, but not all of Southeast Asia, but large part. Up, it, up to, you know, in, including uh, Semenanjung Melayu or whatever, Semenanjung Melayu or Malaysia right now, uh, up to uh, Pahang, and if you look at the, the pledge, the Sumpah, including Gurun. Gurun is at the north of Pulau Pinang, north of USM right now, it's about 45 minutes away. So, uh, Nusantara was a, a huge piece of, 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 uh, of geogra geographical space. Right? And, um, uh, but I'm not arguing Nusantara or as, a, as a, a Javanese concept only. I, I presented this idea last time in, in, in Jakarta. They said Nusantara is a Javanese colonial concept, you know, basically. But I'm not talking about the term, I'm talking about the, the concept of Nusantara, that it began with Benta Sunda, began with Benua Sunda, and then, extend, and then we, we, we were the original people, right, the original, uh, uh, the indigenous people of this land. And and then it, uh, uh, we had great uh, achievements. And look, the first admiral, first woman admiral, first female admiral, was uh, 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 Admiral Malahayati from Aceh, who actually uh, commanded more than 100 uh, Amada ships yeah, and fighting the Dutch and, and, and succeeded. Right? And this is, a, this is a powerful uh, symbol, indicator of how uh, Nusantara is. Uh, it has, is very resilient, uh, is strong, it is um, friendly to the sea, uh, and uh, we love our land and we love our sea, right? We love the, and, and this is how I would define uh, Nusantara, right? Uh, 
and uh, that is how I define the Malay world, right? the Nunusantara Malay Archipelago. Um, let's go to the next slide, um, get to our uh, discussion. Yeah? Um, first of all, and this is a, a slide that I took uh, from last time as well, uh, to understand uh, Islam in the Malay world is to understand the primacy of religion in Nusantara. To understand any religion in Nusantara, in Southeast Asia, is to understand, you must first understand the primacy of religion. What is this? Uh, this is a, a monument, this is the oldest religious monument in Southeast Asia. Right? It is a mon monument in Sungai Batu, uh, which is not too far away from USM, from Penang. Uh, it is a monument, if you can, uh, if you can go, I think we can go to the next slide. Uh, well, I'll, I'll talk about this monument later on. Right? Uh, uh, the Sungai Batu. Monument, namanya Monument Sungai Batu. Uh, I'll come back to this monument and talk about it. Right? Uh, the, 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 why, is it, why do I emphasize the primacy of, of religion? Since the beginning of Nusantara, that monument right, that I showed you just now, maybe we can go back, go back to that monument. <laughs> that monument is a monument that is discovered in a place uh, it's a prehistoric uh, monument and this monument where there's a circle and a square predates Islam, predates uh, 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 Christianity, predates Hinduism, predates Buddhism. In fact, uh, they, uh, the, 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 the archaeologist, uh, the, uh, our global archaeology center from USM call the experts uh, from all the religions. They cannot identify the symbol, right? So who knows, it might be some kind of Harry Potter portal into a fourth dimension metaverse kind of thing and they don't know. <laughs> so the point is that they all agree it is a symbol of, of religion. So religion was integrated even thousands of years ago in Nusantara, right? Uh, and and, uh, and th this, this uh, site, this archaeological site that they found was a, a site that produces uh, iron, iron, iron metal. They have a, a, a uh, what is it? The 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 the, the, uh, the smelting uh, the melting uh, uh, technology to melt uh, irons and all that. But what is the most prominent um, in this particular site? The site is at Sungai Batu, right? Is the structure. So there is there is a significance of religion even before major religions arrive uh, in 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 Southeast Asia in in Nusantara. Let us go to the next one. That, uh, okay, this is Angkor Wat, the temple city. It is the largest religious monument in the world, right? So we have the really biggest religious monument in the world in Southeast Asia. And what is this uh, Angkor Wat? Angkor Wat basically means temple city. It is an integration of religion and state. So uh, it is built by the Emperor Surya Varnam II, who ruled the region from 1113 to 1150 as a state temple held and a political center of his empire. So the whole Angkor Wat is a, is a, is a concept, uh, is a city that integrates religion and state. So the separation was not there. Uh, the integration was a very strong part of uh, religion, is a very strong part of the state, very strong part of the community, yeah. So uh, and and uh, this is a magnificent uh, 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 monument, uh, magnificent uh, religious monument. But it is not just a religious monument; it is also a political monument. But the religious monument defines the re the religiosity, defines uh, the, the, the 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 structure, defines uh, the state, so to say, yeah. Membingkai, framing the, the state, uh, the, the, the symbolism, they're all religious symbolism. So, uh, see, this is still not Islam, right? But this is Nusantara. Right? Uh, and so we go, we go to the next uh, slide. Now, primacy of religion. Um, if you look at Nusantara as a history, right? We have, we have, uh, uh, we have, various religions coming to, to, to Nusantara, right? And we, we talked about Angkor Wat just now, but before uh, Islam came, there were other uh, earlier religions, Hinduism, uh, the Majapahit Empire, of course, but prior to that, there was Sri Vijaya Empire that centered in, 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 uh, in 
uh, Palembang, right? And, and uh, at that time, if you want to learn Buddhism, you want to go to university to learn Buddhism, right? Uh, you got to go to Palembang. You got to go to the southern tip of of of, of Sumatra to learn. And we were uh, the center of uh, of of knowledge for uh, Buddhism, right? and. Uh, and, and as as Nusantara moves in through throughout the history, uh, we see different empires emerging, and the different empires also were also uh, identified with the religion, right? So, uh, if that is, if you look at the numbers there, uh, the current uh, state right now in Malaysia, there were seven Muslim empires, Philippines, uh, two uh, Brunei were two, Sumatra forty. They are all these are Islamic uh, em empires, Islamic. Uh, uh, government, so to say, yeah. Uh, now, so the point that we want to understand from this is that uh, the the pri the idea of primacy of religion. It is uh, uh, religion is part of our history. It is in our civilization. It is in the past and in the present. And the loci of Southeast Asia society is religion, right? And if you look at uh, you know the Pancasila, right? Although uh, you know Islam was taken out uh, initially was put in, but it was taken up to make sure that, that uh, it would not uh, uh, marginalize anyone in its philosophy, right? Uh, the Garuda is a Garuda is a symbol of Hinduism. Is a apa namanya Tunggangan is the is the 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 the, the right of Vishnu, right? Uh, the the you know Vishnu was one of the gods of Hindu Hinduism. So in, in a way. Uh, and up until now, uh, the whole uh, religion uh, is being part of our uh, society, and uh, even Singapore, right? Is it Singapore? Singapore is now recognized as the most uh, religiously diverse uh, nation. Uh, UNESCO banned uh, uh, and uh, and if you go to Singapore, you find uh, there's uh, they actually have this council of religions, yeah. From in, in there's there's Judaism is there there's uh, all the religions that you might not see in our our part of the world uh, you can find it in Singapore uh, and uh, if you look at Malaysia uh, that is Putrajaya Putrajaya is the the, the administ administrative center capital of of, of, uh, of Malaysia right now just like uh, Indonesia wants to move uh, the administrative center to. Uh, uh, Nusantara, right? IKN, uh, Ibu Kota Negeri, uh, Nusantara, namanya juga Nusantara, right? Uh, good, good. Uh, in, in Kalimantan, right? Uh, so uh, Putrajaya was was actually built uh, to be the administrative center as well. And if you look at the philosophy of Nusantara, uh, philosophy of Putrajaya, we have the ulama, umara, and the uh, umat ni di situ ya. So we have the, the pink mosque, that the pink masjid, that is the masjid. The green top there, that is the uh, apa nama ni, pejabat perdana menteri or the the, the kantor presiden gitu kan. Eh. Tapi in Malaysia is called perdana menteri. Uh, uh, and then in front there is a big dataran, yeah. Uh, so for people to converge. Uh, and uh, surrounding it is the is the lake uh, there. So so the, the so religion has never. Uh, left and separated from the society uh, of Nusantara of Malay Archipelago. All right, this I'm setting the scene right now, right? Uh, so let's go to the to the to the uh, uh, next slide. Are we okay? Yeah. yeah, let's go to the next slide. All right, here we go. Okay, so Islam in the Malay world. This is my argument, and this is my central thesis of my presentation, right? Uh, if you want to understand Islam in the Malay world, Islam in the Nusantara Malay archipelago, you must understand Islamic rationalization and institutional Islam. This aspect of Islam right, is a marginalized discourse. It is a discourse that is often not given due uh, recognition, due attention, due analysis. Uh, now, the mainstream discourse uh, it's somewhat self-destructive, I argue. Yeah? Uh, the mainstream discourse is about terrorism, radicalism, extremism, separatism, separat separatism, separatism. Right? Why do I say self-destructive? This is my out of my own experience. 
I, I, uh, a few years ago, I had this international grant between me, uh, in Malaysia, Indonesia, and Sweden. Yeah? And then uh, it's a, quite a handsome, uh, large amount of uh, financial uh, grant, uh, financial uh, funding that we receive. We can organize a conference workshop in uh, Malaysia, uh, Indonesia, and, and Sweden, and we can visit the countries and carry out research. So our partners, uh, uh, we held the first one in, in, in Sampris, in, in, in USM, in Penang, in Malaysia. Uh, and then we want to organize another one in Indonesia. So we want to, <laughs> we want to, we want, we want to bring it to Jakarta, right? Uh, but uh, that was like a year or two after the Sarina bombing, right? Sarina bombing, right? Remember the Sarina bombing, right? So. The, the Swedish partner was so afraid that uh, is Indonesia safe? Is you know is it is it? Uh, you know, uh, uh, yeah, the, she is concerned. Uh, they are concerned about the the, the, the terrorist uh, phenomena in Indonesia. I said Indonesia is very safe. I've been there so many times. There is no problem. Man. I want to go there more often. Yeah? In fact, if you look at the Sarina's uh, bombing, remember if you look at that picture, there's some you know. Uh, a guy still sell sang sate at the back. Tamri, 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 thank you, thank you. Nasi by Adali, Tamri. Indonesia is. I've been to Indonesia so many times. Is uh, and uh, but their concern is there. So uh, after a long uh, negotiation discussion, say okay, let's go to Jogja instead. Yeah, and then uh, Dr Ali Mansum was there, and we agreed to bring the conference to UMA, uh, Universitas Muhammadiyah, Jakarta. So we held the, 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 the conference over there. So now I say why is it self-destructive? Because if we, if we keep on portraying ourselves as being a terrorist state, radical state, extremist state, you know, people will see that picture of us, right? Uh, no, no, no doubt there's internal conflict here and there, but you take that to define the whole of Nusantara, to take that to define the whole of Indonesia, that is being self-destructive, right? That is, that is uh, you know, uh, that's non-productive, right? So, I, I, and, and by the way, that is not the story of Indonesia. The story of Indonesia is that, is that masjid that we saw just now. That is the symbol of Indonesia, right? And probably to a large extent, Indonesia is much more tolerant society than Malaysia, right? Or a more integrated, I would say, a more integrated in, in many ways than, than Malaysia. Uh, but uh, what I would like to do now is to talk about an aspect of uh, Islam in the Malay world, Islam in the Nusantara world, uh, uh, that is being marginalized, but foundationally important, fundamentally imperative for us to understand. So it is the Islamic rationalization in institutional Islam. It is about the Islam and Muslim in everyday life, versus Islam Muslim in sensationalized media. It's about Islam as a development paradigm versus Islamic politics, right? So this will be the focus of, of my presentation. Uh, let's move to the next uh, presentation, please. All right. So what is this Islamic rationalization, Islamic uh, is institutional Islam? Right? It, it, it boils down institutional Islam. If we combine the two, what you see is an Islamic institutional logic. What is this Islamic institutional logic? It is a type of logic. It is a type of uh, uh, thinking, a paradigm that rationalizes various social realities in society. So you see, uh, you see this institutional Islam manifesting itself uh, uh, you know, uh, based on various logics. Yeah? Uh, first is the logic of Rahmatul Alamin, and that is the spreading of blessings. That Islam is not just for Muslims. That we are here to share the benefits of Islam, right? Uh, not just for the Muslims, right? So to to share the rahmat of God, the blessings of God, the goodness of God, right? The, the gifts of God to everyone, right? So that is the logic, first logic. The second logic is the development oriented, the progressiveness. Uh, that Islam that is being uh, manifested uh, in institutional Islam in Nusantara is the is the development oriented Islam is the question that people ask how can Islam bring about 
positive change how can islam bring about a higher quality of life how can islam bring about a higher quality of education uh, yeah. that is that is the that is the islam the marginalized discourse that has been neglected in our uh, understanding of islam in the nusantara malay archipelago the third logic is moderation and wasatiyah uh, uh, that it, it, islam that is manifested uh, that is being expressed uh, that in in nusantara malay archipelago is a moderate islam or in, is a, is a uh, wasatiyah islam right i do not deny that there are extremes i do not deny that there's extremism i do not deny that there are elements of terrorism here and there now look uh, if you look at indonesia there's almost 300 million people if there's one two three four terrorists around right how many percent of 300 million right if you took at the whole of nusantara right, but more than 350 million more than the population of the united states right if you have cases one two three cases per year right that is relatively low right it is unlike united states you have terrorist act only things that they do not call it terrorist act even today then and yesterday three days again somebody just attacked the fbi agent under the name of you know a patriot wanting to support donald trump right and that is defined as domestic terrorism right but we do not see united states as a terrorist state because we believe in the hollywood narrative right the american dream and all that but they define us using terrorism radicalism so much so that we believe in that story and we talk about that story we look at ourselves from the lenses of the west right but the truth is we are moderates right? and i uh, and i feel oh, i've had to travel in nusantara right uh, the, the the extremes are very rare and even the extremes <clears throat> Uh, very welcoming. <laughs> I personally have seen people wearing hijab with, you know, what you call you know, the ninja style. Of, uh, Indonesia called chadar. 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 Over here, chadar is uh, comforter. <laughs> uh, uh, the, 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 yeah. Together with a miniskirt uh, girl on a motorbike, right? What do you call 